Blog Talk Radio. Hello and welcome to Academy Talk Radio. This is the Ask a Medium Radio Show. I'm your host. Reverend Ivy Rivera, Psychic Medium. I'm also the founder of the Ivy League Psychic Academy, where we air tonight, coming to you from Buffalo, New York. We have other Ivy Leagues opening in California, Pennsylvania, and soon to be elsewhere. So stay tuned for that. I designed this radio show in the expectancy that it will reach those of you who are truly ready to receive the knowledge that's being taught here at exactly the right moment in synchronicity with your spirit to see a full listing of the classes that are being taught at the school. You can visit ivyleaguepsychicacademy.com and if you want to book a reading with me through Skype, FaceTime, email, or in person, you could do that at ivyriverapsychicmedium.com or you can find me on Facebook at Ivy Rivera. I encourage all listeners worldwide to attend classes here at the school electronically or in person if you can get out here uh, to us at one of the locations. So join us at the Ivy League Psychic Academy where we are raising up the next generation of lightworkers. Hello everyone, welcome to our show tonight. My name is Amanda Friedman. I am one of the assistant teachers here at the Academy. With me tonight is Ivy Rivera. I can't even call you a guest since this is your show. (laughs) Good to be on my show. Thanks for having me. Um, So tonight we have a very important topic. We want to talk about uh, mentioning, mentioning, I'm okay, Uh, noticing signs and symbols from uh, your deceased loved ones. I feel like a lot of people really struggle with this area, especially right after somebody first passes. They don't really know um, what to look for or, or, you know, they kind of write things off like, oh, it was just my imagination. Um, but before we get into the topic, we have a, uh, a bunch of classes that we want to bring up. Okay, good. All right. Uh, well, uh, starting tomorrow, we have Meet Your Guides class. This is an opportunity for you guys to come join us in person at the Ivy League Psychic Academy. This class will also become downloadable as of tomorrow. You can Skype in, uh, FaceTime in if you need to do that as well. So Meet Your Guides class uh It's going to break down the guides that you have on the other side that are working with you, that are encouraging you to stay within your life contract, get the work done that your soul has agreed to do. You get to meet each one of your guides during this class. We also have level one psychic mediumship development class kicking off on November 9th. That's going to run on Thursday night. And uh, empathic meetings, helping you get in touch with your empathic abilities. It also helps you with anxiety, depression, aches and pains, migraines, insomnia. So the Empathic Means Lecture is already downloadable. You can check that out, or you can come in November 16th. We have Tarot Quest starting up. Open Circle to take all your Q&A. Crystals 101, crystals and energy work, all kinds of things. Tons more at the Ivy League PsychicAcademy.com site. Oh, we also have a Psychic Fair coming up. So it's going to be uh, in our new location, uh, 4525 Main Street in Amherst. So it's going to be an Ivy League Psychic Fair Sunday, November 19th from 1 to 6 p.m. Come and check out a bunch of our readers here. Okay. And we also want to mention um, that you can call in all hour with your questions. Um, What's the number to call in? Want to read it in? Read it off, please. 646-668-2353. Okay, and if you guys want to text your questions into me, you could do that too. It's 716-602-1391. Again, it's 716-602-1391. All right, so first I want to mention some common misconceptions uh, when it comes to noticing signs from your loved ones. Um, so the first one is that only mediums can talk to your loved ones. Mm-hmm. This one drives me crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, I don't really, I don't know, maybe it's just a different idea for people. I'm not really sure, but talk to them in your head. Just call out to them when you're in the car. Like, I, you know, people don't realize they can just open up and, and talk to them. They don't need a medium necessarily to uh, say that they love them or they miss them. Well, I think that people don't believe. I think the biggest problem is that people don't actually believe that after someone dies, 
that their spirit continues on. And the real test to see whether or not we believe that is to have someone close to us pass away Mm -hmm. and see whether or not we do make any attempts to communicate with them. A lot of people lost loved ones, grandparents or pets, you know, when they were kids. And while they were children, they did continue to communicate. And then they said, well, as I, you know, entered my teenage years, my 20s, I stopped. Or I feel like this person stopped trying to communicate with me. And I think it's a a loss of faith. It's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that definitely makes a lot of sense. You know, people listening to society, I want to say, and not really, you know, going with their, their natural intuition and instincts to pay attention to what's going on around them. Um, so people also say sometimes that their loved ones don't have time to visit them. Like they're, they're too busy or they're not, not worthy, something like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's uh, common. I agree uh, that people feel they're not coming around and they feel abandoned Mm-hmm. There is a sense of abandonment that kicks in anywhere from the end of the first year to the, you know, maybe the third year. Some people feel they have a lot of communication with their spirit loved ones uh, up into the fifth year. And when they start to pull back a little bit on the other side, they stay busier over where they are. They uh, could very well give that sense that I'm not coming around anymore. I don't care anymore. I'm in a world of my own. I've evolved into something else. You're still this, this lowly human and I'm something (laughs) bigger. It does, it does feel bad, but it isn't real. That's not at all what's happening. And uh, even though they are continuing with their lives over there, learning, growing, they still come back. What can happen though, is that we lose touch with the means of communication because we are not evolving. We are not learning the language. Mm -hmm. And so we can't expect it to always stay the same. We can't always expect them to come around and give these dynamic shows that they're here. If we're not taking responsibility for the communication and we're taught in our society never to do that, right? We're going to burn in hell if we do that, right? Something (laughs) bad is going to happen. Um, If we're not taking responsibility for the communication, it's like any other relationship with any other human being. Mm -hmm. It's going to deteriorate. But they don't stop coming around. Never. Always around. Mm -hmm. Um, Another misconception. So people ask us all the time, are they okay? Are they happy? Are they at peace? Do they still think that they're still sick or they still have physical limitations that they had while they were here on Earth? But obviously, definitely not the case. Right. Yeah, so, you know, once they cross, um, they're not bitter and angry (laughs) over what happened. I'm not saying they're not watching. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they won't have opinions, (laughs) okay? But they're not bitter and angry over the way that the things were divided up. It's not affecting them negatively Mm -hmm. anymore. Uh, They might have some guidance to give on that note or talk about karma or what would be best. But, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they're not carrying it as a burden. They're not carrying their illness anymore or any kind of uh, hatred or uh, depression over the way any of this went here Mm -hmm. on earth. So they do release and let go. A lot of people also feel that when they see their loved ones right after the passing, they're upset because they didn't look the right way. Mm -hmm. So if somebody passes away and they come and they pay a visit, they come to say goodbye, say their final goodbye. People are able to see them they often don't look right anymore. And I want to say that that's a huge misconception that something's wrong, that they're earthbound, that they're stuck, that they're trapped or suffering. What happens after spirit passes is uh, that it will really need to go and cross over into the light. And some of them stick around for a little while. They stay earthbound for a while, maybe until the ceremony is done, uh, sometimes up to several weeks. And really quickly, they could start to look gray or like more of what we think of when we th- talk about ghosts. Like they could, TV or in the movies. It, they could. They yeah. could look a little funky. Mm-hmm. And uh, that doesn't mean that they're trapped. It, they probably crossed more around the time of their ceremony, you know, the services, or within the first few weeks after, after they let go of everything and said goodbye. Mm-hmm. It's really not something to worry about. So they hang around for a while to kind of comfort the family and make sure that they're okay before they feel 
fully, like they can transition, I guess. Yeah, and different cultures have different time lengths that mm-hmm. that goes on. You know, for, for a lot of people in America, it's like three days, you know, three to eight days. For some cultures, it's three weeks or longer. So that's normal to see that when they come to visit, they don't look right. Mm-hmm. But it passes. Yeah. Um, and then the last one, what you actually kind of answered already, they hold on to grudges or anger, and then there's a lot of unforgiveness. So a lot of people have issues, you know, they can't say goodbye, there's a lot of closure. The last thing we did before they died was we got into this giant fight. Actually, the, the, the living are the ones that suffer from that. Right. The dead don't care. <laughs> right. This is exactly what it is. It's, it's a problem with the living. Mm-hmm. And people do this, unfortunately, after the passing. Yeah. You know, how are we going to split up so-and-so's uh, you know, their will, what, what are we going to do with all the, the yeah. battles? Yeah, the estate, the ashes, mm-hmm. who's going to do what? If I mean, they go on and on. And they're only causing more trouble for themselves. And there is a very strong opinion sometimes coming from the deceased about how that's being done. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it is not, again, because they're suffering. It's because they want what's best for the living. Mm -hmm. And ultimately what's best for the living is to create a peaceful, you know, atmosphere because anger and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Offense, Mm -hmm. you know, things like this are so toxic to the spirit. It blocks so much prosperity that the deceased really wants you to let that go. Mm -hmm. So this is more of what they encourage. So they are fine. They are happy. Let it go. That's always their main message. <laughs> it is. All right. I think we have a caller waiting. All right. So we're going to get to the caller. Hello, caller. Are you there? Hello, are you there? Okay. All right. Do you want to move on to another one? I have one here. Or... Okay. So we have, a, we have a question coming in here through text uh, from an 860 number asking if my dad's wife has a message or any advice as to how my dad should handle the issue that her family is starting. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's fit right in with topic, even though I'm sure that was not necessarily the point. Okay. Yeah. Um, again, if you guys want to text in your questions, you could do that at 716-602-1391. All right, so asking if my dad's wife has a message, okay, uh, or advice to see how my dad should handle the issue that her family is starting. It would have helped to have had her name, but I feel like I have her here. Do you have her? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're going to go over here with her and, and take a minute. Um, what she's showing me immediately is back off. I feel uh, she's taking her hands and she's showing the, the people that are starting the problems and she's showing you guys and taking your hands. And I want to say pulling your hands away from that group of people, uh, turning your energy more into yourself, becoming more introverted, which means reaching out less, connecting less, saying less. She's saying, ignore, ignore, I feel that some of them are treading water. I feel that some of them would have a lot to say, uh, put on a big tattoo, put on a big show, but they don't really have much backing it. So the stamina level really isn't there. It isn't necessarily that everything they say is something you're actually going to have to deal with. So I would say uh, pick your battles. I feel that they don't have any sense of being able to pick their battles. So everything that they're trying to do the show that they're putting on falls really, really short. Okay. And they really don't have um, the kind of power that they're trying to present uh, that they, that they have. So I feel that you guys need to go freely forward and do what makes you feel good and do what you feel is going to honor her and uh, your, your father, but don't give them more power than what they actually have. I agree with that. She definitely feels, uh, very much like she's in the mediator role in this whole situation. But what she keeps telling me is send love, keep lots of love in your heart, you know, to kind of get the negativity out of the situation. So, you know, the right people can benefit. I want to say kind of uh, love and, and forget is what she keeps saying, love and forget. So just send them, you know, good, positive thoughts, 
hoping that, you know, they can eventually get on the right path. But she's like, other than that, like, forget it. Like, you don't need them. You don't need their drama. Just send them all the love and the peace that you can just so you can move on and they won't drag you down with them. Yeah. And she says, like, your, the dad's hands are tied. There's a sense of his hands being tied. Like, there's a sense that you might be shocked. She said, you're shocked. You're shocked by some of the things that are being said and done. I feel three people, ultimately, one male and maybe two females or one very dominant female. But it seems that um, with your dad's hands being tied in all of this, he may not really know how to respond. And he may be getting pelleted by one of those people directly. And uh, I feel that this message also needs to be relayed to him. He is to handle it the same exact way, which is basically ignoring. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, sometimes you just have to let things explode and see if there's actually anything in there. Yeah. That it feels you like need to hot air. Huh? It feels like the other side's full of hot air. Yeah, pretty much. Like they're, what are you gonna they're do? all talk and they're no walk. They're not yeah, what are, you, what are you going to do? You know, and it just feels like a lot of toxic negative energy, mm-hmm. um, which is unfortunate because they, they should be focused on growing up and, and creating more peace in this situation. And that doesn't seem to be anywhere on the agenda um, except, for that, except for that one who feels more uh, male energy to me, you might get a little bit more humble attitude off of that one. The thing is, he doesn't have follow through. You know, even when he sees that something is wrong, he doesn't, fo- he doesn't follow through and say to the other ones, this is how it needs to be. Mm-hmm. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Like he doesn't have that voice. Weak-minded. Like, uh, yeah. You know, the sh- it's cheap. It's the blind leading the blind. Mm-hmm. There's no leader here. So be the leader. Okay. And she's watching over and um, helping as much as she can. With it. She's doing very well. Hello, caller, are you there? Having a little issue here hearing from the callers. Caller, are you there? I'm not hearing any. Yeah, I don't hear anything. Anything from from this one. All right. Okay. Some technical stuff sorted out, and then we will move on. Okay. So, um, common signs and symbols. I feel like when I give readings. You know, grandma steps forward, she can give somebody 45 symbols, and they're like completely oblivious. <laughs> if I let them go, they just keep going, symbol after symbol after symbol. Right. <laughs> um, so I always have grandmas that absolutely love hummingbirds for some reason. Like, that's a big one. So they love to send like birds and animals. Um, also, like in that same category, I guess, like butterflies, ladybugs, dragonflies. Yep. Um, the winged animals. Yes. I don't know if they're easier to navigate. Easy. What I'm assuming, control, because they maybe. definitely, they definitely control mm-hmm. them, and sometimes I think they get into the winged animal, yeah. and there are literally birds flying into your window, mm-hmm. and then living and getting up and flying away, flying back again. Yeah, a lot yeah. of winged animals. Um, so I'll, I'll tell you a quick story real quick, <laughs> just to give people an example. So when my father passed, I asked him to send me butterflies. So, you know, I see them all the time when he's, you know, saying hello or, you know, if I know I need to tune in and kind of listen to what he's giving me. Um, so recently, waiting to hear from a landlord about moving into a new place, I'm driving, see a butterfly, mm-hmm. end of October. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, cool, we're going we're gonna to get the place. And then today we're there cleaning out. <laughs> In the back of the kitchen drawer is a butterfly sticker, like, stuck oh, to the drawer. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, we wouldn't have seen it unless, you know, we were bent over, like, cleaning and scrubbing. Right. But I was like, all right, Dad, thank you. Like, I know you you helped us get this place. Amen. And, uh, thank you. And, and that's something I try to explain to my clients, too, is it doesn't have to come in the literal creature. Yeah. Like, say, wing down. It could be a sticker. Mm-hmm. It could be something on social media. It could be something you're waiting in line at the store, and you look over, and the magazine next to you is covered, crusted in this image. Mm-hmm. You know, the symbols can come in any form, and we shouldn't just miss them because mm-hmm. they don't come in the way that we're thinking the box yeah. in way I would say too with the winged animals interesting my grandmother when she was passing her symbol was always butterflies mm-hmm. had them all over her house and loved them very much anything we bought her you know had butterflies on it and she was still technically alive and she was alive for several more days but she was already working in spirit mm-hmm. while the body was still alive Sending, again, that time of year, they had no business being here. It was already cold, but there was most certainly a butterfly that would hang out from her room in the infirmary all the way out into the uh, 
elevator, go down from the third floor into the first floor. And when I would come back the next day to visit her, that butterfly would be waiting and would travel with us up to her room. Mm -hmm. And so uh, very quickly they learn how to navigate. Oh, yeah. Uh, What else do we have? Okay, so we have coins. They love to drop coins on your path. And people are like, oh, you know, somebody just just fell out of their pocket, whatever. Well, no, pick it up. Look at the date. It could be, you know, an anniversary, it could be the year they died, it could be your birthday year, you know, anything like that. So definitely pay attention to coins. Yep, the pennies from heaven. Mm-hmm. Yep. Also, I don't know why, but like in my readings, it feels like the males like to send the coins more than the females. I get that too. Yeah. Yeah. I get Strange. that too. Yep. And then um, they do different things with the coins. They'll show you different types of coins mm-hmm. and they'll let you know uh, whether or not they're talking about like your finances. Like if you should get like a half dollar or gold coins, like the bigger the coin, the more they're watching over your finances and literally um, giving you money sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One time I asked for help with my finances and then I find like change on the ground. Yeah. I was like, well, I need a little bit more than this. Yeah. A little bit more than this. It's coming. (laughs) And then you get like a tax return that you didn't expect in the mail or something like this is them manipulating situations. Mm -hmm. Um, All right. So a lot of people, think this sign is specifically for angels, but that's not the case. Feathers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your loved ones can uh, drop feathers on your path also, not just angels. Um, And I guess the way to tell the difference is just kind of stop, take a minute, kind of feel the energy, like feel where it's coming from. Um, We have a class here called uh, Coffee with Your Angels, mm -hmm. and we break down the basic symbols that angels use to communicate. And one of the key factors in figuring out whether your feathers are coming from loved ones or they're coming from angels um, is what's going on in your life at that time. Because angels are going to show up when you're in any kind of significant turmoil, Mm -hmm. whether it's like a severe health issue or severe depression, you're going through a lot. That would be an angel coming in and you would know the difference because it doesn't feel like the energy of your loved one that you would recognize before. So that's huge. What you just said, when you get, a symbol, stop and feel the energy that's connected. Ask, who gave me this? Yep. And go with your first impression. Don't say, oh, you know, Grandpa Joe sent me this. Oh, wait, no. Like, he hated birds. He wouldn't send me feathers. All right. Well, people like to attribute things, and they stay with that. They get yeah. so stuck in that. It's always this one person, mm-hmm. and that really limits us. Yeah. All right. Well, okay, so we have smells. Mm-hmm. So that can be uh, floral scents. It could be grandma's cooking. Um, cigars, cigarette smoke, or, you know, colognes, perfumes. Yeah, we have these abilities. We have something called Claire Augustine. Claire Augustine is the ability to taste something that you didn't eat, you know, maybe a message from spirit. Uh, They cooked something in particular. They drank a certain, you know, Jack Daniels or something. Uh, They're they're cigarettes. You can even taste the brand in your mouth. Uh, So you can taste it. You can also smell it. It's similar to clairsentience, mm-hmm. the ability to use your senses uh, to follow with these things. Yeah, lilacs, roses, somebody's perfume, somebody's cologne. This is huge. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people, again, just dismiss that one. I think maybe they think it's something in the air or, mm-hmm. you know, just, I don't know, coincidence. But knows. you won't be able to smell it in your clothes. Mm-hmm. You know, my aunt will come and visit and the whole car will be filled with smoke. But we could still see and it doesn't smell on our clothes, yeah. and then it just disappears, and everyone can smell it. You'll walk into a cloud of some type. This is part of the reason people dismiss this kind of thing. Again, they don't want to take responsibility. Mm-hmm. It is part of the language. Claire Augustine and Claire Sentience is part of learning the proper communication mm-hmm. with the other side. Those are abilities that we have, but we dismiss it. Yeah. All the time. Like, I say that to people in readings, and they just kind of look at me like I'm nuts most of the time. But mm-hmm. <laughs> Until it happens. Yep. Color? Okay, I think we have a color waiting. See if it works this time. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? What's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm Donna. I'm from California. Hi. Um, Hi, what's your you... question tonight? Okay, it's a medium. I want to ask... Um, I can hear and see my mother once in a while. She's been gone for 30 years. But I did hear her say that I was going to be rewarded. Do you know what she meant by that? Because I haven't been able to, you know, I can't ask them to come to me. It's just when they do come to me, I hear them. 
but I have no idea. I mean, does that mean like a life lifestyle change or a husband coming in or uh, well, a windfall? Well, or- well, first, you know, first things first, it is, it's a myth that you can't call to them. Okay. We have been trained um, internationally for the last, you know, 150 years that we can't ask them questions, that we can't call to them. And then people do things like seances and it doesn't make any sense and it gets a bad rap. Okay. It's, it's not true that you can't contact her and ask her to come and give you that answer yourself. So I would say start taking more responsibility for the communication. By all means, you're able to ask your mother to come in at any time and to clarify. And I would guarantee that she's more than eager to do so. Um, It just depends on your ability to hear her and receive that. So I would say some homework for you tonight is to ask her to come and visit you in your dream and to give you the rest of that information. What I'm feeling with it is that this is maybe like three weeks ago, three months ago. I feel that there's something brewing around that time uh, where this prosperity was, was beginning to come in. And I feel like it is a bit of a lifestyle change. I feel like I'm looking at your finances. I feel like I'm looking at work, uh, the living situation, a general improvement there. And then it feels like relationship stuff, but coming after that. And then I feel something about a car. Like a like a, a new car upgrading to a bigger car, I feel something bigger, almost like a beige or like a silver um, looking uh, vehicle here. So it, it feels like it's going to affect several different areas, but it would be like one, two, three. So it's like work and money relationship in the vehicle. What are you getting? I with I agree uh, with everything Ivy said, but she also keeps screaming the word intuition at me. Um, so it's funny, uh-huh. you know, Ivy Ivy said, you know, tune in uh-huh. and listen to her, see so if you can build it up more. Um, I feel like she's definitely pointing you in that direction, learning to trust your gut. And she keeps screaming, stop second guessing yourself. Oh. Also. <laughs> so, you know, That's go with your, because- your initial instinct. The Powerball, when I heard that two days later, the Powerball was on the lottery. And I played, I've been playing my mother's numbers for a long time. And I played her numbers. And then the last number, I didn't want to use her one, but, you know, I was feeling four, four, four. And I went on her one because they were her numbers and I've been playing them so long. But if I had listened to my intuition with the four, I would have won 17,000. Oh, wow. (laughs) That was kind of a bummer. I hope that's not what that is. Intuition is The people who are doing best at the casino, let me tell you, they're all psychic, okay? And they have mastered this. And it is all about trusting your gut instincts, Mm -hmm. going with the first. Uh, which is going to build up your communication with her too. So take control, take power of that. I also that feel like she wasn't had the it. Reward. What's that? Oh, but that probably wasn't the reward coming in, right? Was that? Well, you could say that all of this is the reward coming in, you know, because certainly on the next round, then you are going to catch it. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. so no, it's not like it's not like you lost it, you know, not, not at all. You know, there were a bunch of things mentioned, but but your mother did have the intuition. Your grandmother had the intuition. You do need to follow yeah. through with that a little bit more. Okay. Well, many blessings. How exciting. Yeah. Thank you for calling. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Bye. Absolutely. Have a great night. Okay. I have another one coming in here through text. Okay. I want to say uh, from a uh, 418 number. My mother and mother-in-law both passed within 18 months of each other, and I was their caregiver. I have such guilt for playing nurse and missing the tenderness of their passing. In fact, the last words my mom, my mother-in-law, spoke to me was, I will never talk to you again because I forced her to move over in the bed. Can you get any messages from them? Um, again, when you guys send in your questions, it'd be great if you could give names because we have so many spirits over here. So it really cuts down on our time connecting. Um, but I do feel like I have her. I also feel like I have your mother, mother being a little bit of a different personality, uh, from her, uh, quite more calm. Um, first thing that I'm feeling with her, as far as your mother-in-law is concerned, um, is that you expected that. Okay, she said that you expected, you expected this. You know me. You knew me. Okay, you expected this. Um, I want to say don't, don't, put, uh, don't put guilt on yourself. You know, I'm not putting guilt on myself. So let it go. It's human nature. 
human nature, okay? I also feel like from your mother, be realistic, okay? She keeps blowing you kisses, and I feel like the last two weeks, two months have been hard for you. She keeps blowing you kisses and watching out over you, and I feel like bringing you tissues. Um, so I do feel like you're struggling with some other things inside yourself completely separate from this. But um, I want to say that you need to be, be a little bit more willing, let things go. She said that you are quite centered at peace, and you really know the answers. So I want to say don't, don't dramatize. Okay, don't dramatize. Uh, she said you did a brilliant job. And I feel that there's also a father um, energy, uh, talking about five, possibly five that were left behind. Um, but I'm also talking about a five-month period, looking out here, over here to the future um, with you, where I feel like you taking care of others, okay, as well. And um, a lot of pride going on there. So be realistic. It's your power. You being able to let that stuff run off your back. It feels like water off a duck's back. Is that the way you say it? Water off a duck's back? Okay. But a lot of gratitude for sure from both of them. First, I was just like overwhelmed with emotion. Like when you were reading that, I feel like that's everything that you're holding on to that you need to let go. Like Ivy was saying, definitely let go of that guilt. There's no need for it. They were so very appreciative of the care and the time that you put in, even if they weren't the ones. Well, your mother-in-law, <laughs> she wasn't the type to verbally say it, I want to say, um, but she definitely felt it. Um, also with your mother, I keep getting like, she keeps showing me like purple and pink flowers, I want to say. So pay attention for uh, floral smell when she comes through. But I also feel like it's almost like, like leaving them on her path in a way, I want to say. Like looking down and seeing like a petal, pink or purple specifically, these two colors with the flowers coming in with your mother. Um, and I'm, and I'm, she's giving me too on the on the note of the pink. That's um in my symbol base. That's unconditional love. Mm -hmm. I feel like you need to have a little bit more unconditional love for yourself. You know, you give so much to others, and you're not really giving that back to yourself. So I want to say, practice what you preach: mm -hmm. unconditional love, spirituality, get in touch with what's really going on, not these illusions. Mm -hmm. But it feels like it, it's she's been holding on to it for a while, and it just like you really just need to let that go. It feels like it's. Uh, 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 like creating like all these constant blocks I feel like you go a little bit far like you know go a little bit stop go a little bit stop it just feels like this kind of like jerky motion but clear that out let it go know that you did the best you could they love you they greatly appreciate all the time and effort you put in mm -hmm. so I also just heard who else would have done it yeah <laughs> so I don't know what that means but who else was going to do it okay so you did a brilliant job all right, thank you so much Okay, excellent. I wanted to I wanted to play off of what you what you were saying. Okay, um, uh, you were talking about the most common symbols mm -hmm. that people receive, overlook yeah. usually. Okay, but that are being sent mm -hmm. uh, from our spirit loved ones. And I want to say that uh, physical, mental, emotional reactions are something we talk about here a ton at the Ivy League Psychic Academy. And in the Level 1 Psychic Mediumship Development class, I train you guys in identifying physical, mental, emotional reactions. When a spirit comes in, they are able to trigger physically in your body. It's called a physical impression. How they died, something that they were suffering with. So if they had a heart attack, you might have chest pain. If they had a you know, some kind of fluid in the lungs, you might feel almost like a heaviness or a weight way down in your chest, um, liver, kidneys, you know, you're going to feel it where, wherever that, you know, that is in your body. Um, if they fell, you might feel like an impact at that particular location in your body, a stroke will radiate down your right arm. There are a million different things that they're giving you as a sign when they come close to you that this is them coming through, hoping that you will identify other times they're just coming near you. They're not necessarily trying to say anything. They can't help it. And when they come in close, one of the most common things to get is an anxiety attack, yep. uh, profusive sweating, ringing in the ears. That's them. All of this counts. We might also see them as orbs, mm -hmm. colored orbs, okay? Lights, cascading lights out of the corner of our eyes when we're waking up. We see orbs shoot off into the corners of the room and disappear. These are all visits. Mm -hmm. This counts. I think it scares a lot of people, though. They don't know what to expect. They don't know who's coming. So then they freak out, and then it, it stops because they, they block what's coming through. They shut down. 
And and that's another good point to bring up too. Your loved ones, if they come through and you're sobbing every time you connect with their energy, they're gonna back off. They they just want to come through to make you happy and say hello and they love you. They don't want to make you cry. They don't want you upset. They don't want you mourning. Oh my God, she's not okay. She's bad. You know we. We complain that they don't come around enough, but every time they come, you know, we turn into these basket cases. We we hold on to that those negative ideas. Yeah. But rejoice, celebrate it. It's a communication. Be grateful. You know, an attitude of gratitude goes a really really long way. Also, people need to stop running into their medicine cabinets and into the doctor's office yeah. every time they start to. You know, if you're if if people passed in your family, including pets, and you start to notice that you're having more bouts of anxiety or physical pain, this is probably them visiting you. And when they come into your energy field, you're having that reaction. When loved ones pass away, anybody close to us, including pets, we also move up a level with our intuitive ability. Mm -hmm. And instead of feeling like we have, you know, problems because of these mental, physical, emotional reactions, we need to embrace our abilities, take responsibility for where we are with our intuition, develop it and say, oh, gee, you know, I'm more intuitive now. It is the number one way to move up to the next level. You can't shut your intuition down and go backward. We only progress forward. So all of that is being fed, but we're trying to shut it down with the diagnoses and the medications and the bad, you know, the bad thinking about them coming around. Uh, we don't read it properly. Mm-hmm. So we need to embrace it. That's actually what brought me into the academy. Like my father passed. And, you know, I've always been into, you know, the psychic fairs and the paranormal stuff, you know, so I always kind of had that background and, you know, weird things happening in the house, but we could recognize it as loved ones. Um, so after he passed, it was just this, like, intense spike. Like, I have to get answers. I have to figure out what's going on. And um, actually, the first time I met you was at a psychic fair, and you channeled him, and he's like, okay, you need to work on this stuff. Like, what are you waiting for? <laughs> so then I started here. taking classes, you know, way back. In your living room, you know. Four years ago, yeah, or it was at the house. Yeah, at the house. Fifty of us crammed in the living room, (laughs) sitting outside the bathroom. And I remember the first time he came through, it was almost like fire on my back. And then, like, I started sobbing. And, of course, everybody in the room was, like, staring at me. (laughs) But it was just such an amazing experience. And then from there, you know, obviously things progressed. But I was just so grateful that, you know, you were able to put the pieces together so I could connect with him, you know, on my own. And now, uh, maybe a little bit emotional, (laughs) (laughs) but just just having that gratitude, just being able to reach out and connect for yourself. Right. Because I mean, even though, and and look, there's a huge difference between the way that you're getting emotional right now. Mm -hmm. Speaking of your father, remembering the great connections you, you know, you get to have with your father, even though now he's, he's, you know, cross, And it's a little bit different. There's a huge difference between the way you're getting emotional right now, but rejoicing and celebrating in it and feeding it versus, you know, complete breakdown, but, you know, getting into a stupor, a depression, needing and grasping and needy, needy, needy. I need more of you. There's a huge, um, I want to say awakening Mm -hmm. that goes on when we start to celebrate and evolve. And the amount that they're able to give, and I mean able to give, because there are restrictions on the other side. They can't be disrupted. They can't drag you down. Um, you know, we, we release all of those restrictions. And the communication is endless. The possibilities are endless. Mm-hmm. They can communicate when we're sleeping. So visit dreams. Um, astro travel. We could travel to where they are. We could travel up and meet together uh, every day while we're awake through clear audience, clear sentience, clear cognizance. Um, all of these abilities that we have that we haven't developed yet, you know, and uh, they're constantly willing, and we need to embrace it. We do, and that's uh, I was going to bring up a little bit later, but. Gratitude, that is so huge. Yep. You appreciate their effort because it takes so much energy for them to send a symbol, to send a sign, Thank you. to put that on her. It just drains them. And then you realize, you know, you might not hear from them for another three weeks. They have to, like, recharge after that. It just takes so much out of them. And people don't realize, you know, they can't just manifest something with the snap of their fingers. Exactly. It takes a lot. You know, I would say, to respect your medium. You know, you go to a medium and, 
you're so demanding of what you're going to hear and you're so ungrateful for so much of what you hear. We live in that society today. We're educating people on what this is really about. Mm -hmm. It takes a tremendous amount of effort for us to do what we do. Mm -hmm. That deserves recognition. And we can't force them. It takes a tremendous amount of energy for the spirits to come through and deliver what they have. Now, this is an amazing thing. And when you, when you come in and you aren't grateful for it, they will pull back, as will your medium. Mm -hmm. It's natural. No one wants to communicate with someone who isn't appreciative, who isn't feeding the communication, who isn't taking responsibility for their end of it. So uh, it's really a perfect fit and image of the way we communicate with other live humans. Because nothing changes. The dynamics are all the same. Mm -hmm. Their personalities stay the same. <laughs> Everything is pretty much the same. No one here is a magician. Yeah. You know, with an endless supply of energy. So, so we have to learn the language and uh, celebrate it, take responsibility. Yes. Gratitude is so important. Mm -hmm. um, oh, here's another one. So the first time this happened to me it completely freaked me out. But seeing somebody who looks exactly like, like your past loved one. It happened to be like somebody in the car in front of me. They looked in their mirror. Swear to God, it was my father. <laughs> so I'm like stalking this car for a while. Right. <laughs> and then get up close at the light and then realize it's not him. Obviously, I knew that logically, but you know, my brain shut off for a minute. And I was like, Why do you look like him? Oh, like <laughs> Twenty minutes later. <laughs> oh, let's see, I didn't get like, did he pull an Elvis with you or yeah. something? You know, is he like, how, like, how do they keep reappearing? I know. They're using that. They really are, and it cannot be dismissed. Uh, I had a client the other day who had her boyfriend, who passed away, coming through in spirit during her reading, talking about the red car. You see me in the red car. And she said, he died in the red car. That's how he died. He was speeding in the red car. And he kept saying to her, you see me speeding by you, you know, in this red car, even pulling up and things like this. And um, he was combining the red cars, men who looked just like him. Yeah speeding by her in the red car. He was combining that. And this is interesting because this is, I mean, really get the full scope, open up your mind, look at everything around you when this is happening, mm -hmm. because he was not only doing that, he was doing it in locations where she would also have a billboard that had a saying that he wanted her to see oh. or behind a license plate because he uses numerology mm -hmm. with her too sending her these numbers all the time, yeah. especially with the clock. So he was combining all these things. I'm like, this is brilliant. Look at what we could be missing. And she has been catching it. How many men that look just like him and red are eating bike in their day? Yeah. Um, you know, is it, is it odd? Yeah, it's odd. Should we dismiss it? No, not at all. Is it a gift? It is a gift. It's, all, it's just their way of lightening things and saying hello sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that's not. Yeah. It throws you off, but it's, pretty cool the same time. it really is <laughs> yeah oh so we have um songs on the radio yep they love to make you hear certain lyrics um you know not just your guys or your loved ones love to do this also um and then kind of tied into that music boxes going off because that that's actually what my grandmother does we have a bunch of her music boxes still she had a big collection and uh, when she wants to get our attention, she just makes one start playing. And these are in, you know, a curio cabinet. They haven't been touched in however long. Right. And we just hear, like, random notes and they spin. <laughs> right. And even hearing it in your head, my, mm -hmm. my great-grandmother left a, a doll. She had a huge doll collection. And uh, the doll that I ended up with does play music. It's toy land, girl land, little boy and girl land, whatever mm -hmm. that is. And uh, I'll hear it in my head sometimes. Just out of nowhere, I'm not thinking anything. That's how you know she's using clear audience to let me know that she's mm -hmm. around. She's putting that song in my head. Yeah. And then, okay, so you mentioned this briefly, but numbers. Again, um, not just an angel thing to use repeating numbers and numerology, but always, always look them up. So Google them. You'll get more in-depth meaning. Um, and then from there, you can kind of tune in and kind of see what direction, you know, you feel like the message is supposed to head, but a lot of people do, numbers. you know, certain, certain people are followed by numerology mm -hmm. and people who have a lot of this will notice that they're always seeing the pattern and they don't really know where it's coming from. Maybe it's coming from their guides. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's coming from their higher mind. We're brilliant the way we can communicate and guide ourselves without even recognizing it. And to understand those numbers is huge, but people who have a lot of numerology, 
uh, within their families. We'll also notice people dying and, and people being born in the family on the same identical day. Repeat patterns and all of that. But these days, what I'm seeing a lot of you probably are too, with a lot of your clients, is like random numbers being spit out. And they're not numerology people as much, but numbers are being used more often by spirit. Yeah. And when we Google something like angel numbers, mm-hmm. let's say, the people are like, well, what's the purpose? Why do I keep seeing it? The purpose is that your loved ones are giving you guidance about where you are in your life right now. Mm-hmm. Therein lies the message. So if you're getting the number one, right? No, like one, for example, would represent new beginnings, opportunity, highest form of prosperity, but there's work you have to do. You have to achieve it. You have to earn it. You have to go get it. Uh, Five is like new beginnings, let's say. So they're encouraging you in that direction. So look the numbers up. The numbers will change. So if the number changes, it doesn't mean that your loved one stopped communicating with you and now it's a different spirit. It means your direction has changed and they're giving you new messages in that direction. Mm -hmm. Communication, it's ongoing, it's evolving. Yeah, but I, I do notice that too with, with clients. It's definitely, they keep mentioning it a lot more when I'm channeling. Yeah. Pay attention to the numbers. Or they'll even say like what the number sequence is, you know, just. And then what it's going to be. Yeah. I'm like, what is going on? I, I guess it's just part of evolution in general. You know, we're all intuitively supposed to be evolving right now. And spirits using more communication than ever in these interesting ways. Numerology is easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, so real quick, I'll tie into that. Um, so this time of year, we also want to mention the veil between worlds is very thin. Right. So this is an excellent time to start putting everything that we're talking about into practice and reaching out to your loved ones. Um, you can even request a specific sign or symbol. Um, you know, like I did with my father, you know, send me butterflies. Or, you know, you can be like, Grandma, send me rainbows. But as we mentioned earlier, not always literal. <laughs> yeah could be on a t-shirt or, you know, bumper sticker or something like that. Yeah. But. Well, yeah. So, right, you know, right now with the veil being lifted, it's people are complaining a lot about more paranormal activity or they're getting more paranoid. And then people who are into it are really basking in it. You know, they're, they're thoroughly enjoying it and they feel like they're evolving with their intuitive abilities. It's uh, this time of year, the weather changes and um, everything is energy. And so we're able to tap into um, these energies on the other side more easily hear from them more more easily see them with our eyes literally hear them with our ears literally things like that so um, it's an interesting time of year you know the old myth used to be that that spirits could only cross if they were earthbound they could only cross during this time of the year or on you know the one day you know just on Halloween this is not at all the case but it does make it easier because the veil is so thin. So this is a great time of year too to help spirits cross over to the other side. If you feel that they've been earthbound or stuck, you can assist them in that. Anyone can do it. Um, but what you're referring to is more like death coaching. Okay. So yeah. I coined the term death coaching, um, helping my clients and teaching the psychic mediums here at the Academy to be able to help people who are dealing with a loved one that has not crossed yet. So whether it's hospice, you know, someone's just really getting up there in age, Uh, we are able to come in and do death coaching with people who are needing to learn the language. We are able to learn the language before they cross. And when they're in the process of crossing over, I call it playing both sides of the fence. So the person getting ready to go is able to communicate from the spirit world just as easily as they're able to communicate from the living world when they're awake, okay, if if they're still waking up. Uh, This is similar to what I said my grandmother was doing with the butterfly Mm -hmm. while she was still technically alive. So we designed a a program here in the level two psychic mediumship development called death coaching. And we learn all, all these different ways that we can assist not only the soon to be deceased in a symbol base that can be easily received um, by the living, but we can also coach the deceased in perfecting their craft Mm -hmm. in communication. So one of the things that we could do is to talk to our loved ones on the other side. We didn't do this while they were passing. We can say, you know, Hey grandpa, come, you know, come and talk to me. Uh, And for 10, 15 minutes, maybe you invite your grandfather's spirit to come and sit with you. And you say, let's create, 
a symbol base that we're going to use with each other. Maybe show me some numbers that you're going to be using. Show me some symbols. Is it going to be winged animals? Uh, maybe a rainbow, um, maybe some songs. And we need to get really empowered in the process. Instead of passively sitting by and just saying, show me what you're going to use. Oh, this isn't working. He's not showing me anything. Forget about it. Okay, you're not, you're not there yet anyways. You've never used this before. Don't expect this to be clear. You say to grandpa, I want you to use birds, like, you know, something that he can find in your area, cardinals or something, you know. And then you want to say, like, I want you to use uh, rainbows with me. Could you please use pennies from heaven or something that we shared together, a symbol of something we shared together, certain songs. All of this makes it easy. Now, you can also pick more simple things like flicker the lights, mm -hmm. okay? Touch my phone, uh, visit me in a dream. Now that can get a little tricky for some of them, mm -hmm. but there's a world of options out here that aren't being used. Again, it breaks down to the clairs. We need to, we need to get educated on and we need to understand the clairs. Clair audience is the ability for them to put a thought in your head or a sound in your head. Clairsentience is the ability for them to touch somewhere in your body with a physical impression, right? Uh, Clair Augustine is tasting in your mouth, smelling. Mm -hmm. um, what else do we have? Um, um, Clair Cognizance. I mean, I guess that kind of ties into Clair Audience. In yeah, some that, way. that one's tougher. Yeah. Clair Empathy, mm -hmm. you know, can be a little tougher too. But but let's use Clair Empathy as another example. Clair Empathy is the ability to feel maybe what they felt. So if you all of a sudden have an overwhelming sense of emotion or love or warmth, or you just feel tears streaming down your face, that's them. That's them using clear empathy. So there are uh, plenty of ways, but give them options. Tell, yeah. tell them what you want to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. You know, like I said, you can request specific symbols, but then don't be so close, close down to how it comes through. Yeah, because we don't know what their abilities yeah. are either. And mm -hmm. so we're helping them with their abilities. And we're also expanding with our abilities. It's a group effort. And it's fun. It's teamwork. Mm -hmm. And it works. So that's coaching for sure. All right. And then um, I also want to touch in on dreams. Because I feel like the spirit also like bombards people with dreams. And, you know, they're not really sure how to take it. Um, so as you mentioned previously, visitation dreams. Um, so you notice that your loved one comes through, maybe they're just kind of hanging out in the background of your dream, or, you know, they say something to you, but their mouth doesn't move. Mm -hmm. A lot of telepathic communication. Um, so these are ways to know it's, you know, a true visitation dream and not necessarily psychological. Right. I was just going to say that. Mm -hmm. When you're truly engaging with a loved one on the other side through your dreams, you will notice that their mouths don't move. Mm -hmm. If you are having a long extended encounter with a loved one, or there's a lot of drama involved, a lot of chaos or negative messages. They're not happy with you. They're angry about something. They're, they're in turmoil over something. We start to notice that maybe this isn't the real deal. And that's where we need to start breaking down. We have, we have a class here called Dreams Class. I was super creative on that one. <laughs> so it's called Dreams Class. Okay, and it breaks down subconscious dreams versus visit dreams versus astral travel and, you know, all kinds of different things, sleep apnea, sleep paralysis, what's really going on. And uh, it's interesting. So, you know, we want to be able to identify when they actually came through with the communication, and those are the major symbols, uh, major signs that it was real. The mouths don't move. It tends to be fast. Yeah. Or the way you said, it's almost like you're passing them mm -hmm. or you're watching them. They might not come in super close. Things like this. I noticed too, sometimes they like to build up that way, like build up to the communication. So if you have a dream where they, you know, you pass them on the street or something, and then maybe, you know, a week later you'll have the dream where they pass on the actual message. Mm -hmm. So just trying to bring that into your awareness and trying to get you to remember, you know, hey, I'm trying to reach out to you in your dream. Yeah, you got to meet me halfway. Yeah, right on. No, you're right. Yeah, because they're not going to exert a bazillion, you know, ton of energy here um, mm -hmm. if you're not even paying attention. So they will. And, and that's how every spirit works. It's sort of like a little nudge, a little indication. And when you take the bait, there will be more. So it's yeah. all about acknowledgement. Now, the other thing is they use symbols. 
So, and this is where a lot of people miss the message. I have no idea what my mother's trying to say. Why has she visited me in three dreams? She isn't a magician either. You have to do your part of the work. There's a great dream book out there. It was my great-grandmother's dream book. They reissued it in 95. It's called The Dreamer's Dictionary by Lady Stern Robinson and Tom Corbett. Now, this is going to be downloadable through uh, YouTube. This show is going to get archived. Mm -hmm. but you guys can go back and listen. Um, I would say that uh, using that dream book, okay, and uh, through Google, it's called Dream Moods. Mm -hmm. A to Z dream dictionary. These are free. These are downloadable yep. or apps and whatever. So you look up the symbology in the dream. Just because there's a lot of bizarre looking symbols doesn't mean that it wasn't a real encounter. It means that that's how your loved one is trying to give you the message. So look at the atmosphere. Were you in a house? Were you in a school? Were you on a ship? Who else was there? What were you doing? Were you eating? Was it an apple? What kind of food was it? What on what was the activity you have to analyze all of this to figure out what the messages are so do your part and that's another thing too with all the, you know these symbols coming at you in dreams you know a lot of people are like well i don't dream or i don't remember my dreams or blah 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 so you have to do, make the effort again so ask you know during the day take some time out to meditate close your eyes say hey what did you tell me in my dream last night and i feel like i really have to emphasize as a client <laughs> it's just like it's like a repetitive message like, oh, well, I don't remember my dreams. Why Why are you telling me grandma's coming through? Right. It's like, no, you have to put in the work. You have to meet them halfway. Well, what they say is I don't dream. Yeah. I don't dream. I don't get messages from spirit. I don't have psychic ability. Mm -hmm. I don't have this. I don't have that. Blah, blah, blah. The more we say this stuff, the, more, the less we evolve. This is why there's been stagnancy with the evolution of intuition for so long. I can't ask. We could just passively sit here and maybe receive none of this is real. This is impossible. It's not that phenomenal. Like it's not, you yeah. know, it really is not that big of a deal. Anybody can do this, but we have to put a little effort into it. So it is a complete myth that we don't dream. If you're not accessing your dreams, it's because you're blocked. Mm -hmm. Now we can fix that at dreams class, you know, um, but you have to put forth the effort to unblock it. Yeah. So absolutely. You're using that. Um, all right, so I think that about concludes everything we wanted to mention tonight. Can I see that list of classes one more time? Oh, sure. There's so much more organized. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, so I just want to say to everybody real quick, okay, um, if you are interested in developing more of your psychic, mediumistic, empathic abilities, you would want to uh, register for the Level 1 Psychic Mediumship Development class. Now, that is starting November 9th, which is, what, a week from now, two weeks from now. Mm -hmm. uh, Thursday night's running 7 to 9 p.m. It is up on the Ivy League Psychic Academy website. So that's ivyleaguepsychicacademy.com. And you could take this class internationally. It will be downloadable, but there will also be exercises. Uh, that you need to get involved in if you are trying to earn the certificate. So you'll need to contact me, and uh, you could do that through the website. You can also do this through Skype, FaceTime, or you can come in person and join us. It's a 16-week course. It's amazing, and it will teach you the ins and outs of all of this so that you can also, if you choose, be able to give a 15-minute professional reading to the public at the end of our graduation in uh, 16 weeks. Yeah, and... Um Sorry, they're, they're just kind of screaming at me to emphasize. <laughs> if you love this topic and this radio show, take level one because it will help you open up your abilities and communicate with your loved ones on a more regular basis. Yeah, I have a ton of students who come in just to communicate with their loved ones, and they can't believe how far the evolution has gone. Now they're able to read for the public, yep. you know, and help other people also exactly. kind of. So if you're interested in booking a reading with me, you can find me at ivrivera.psychicmedium.com. Find me on Facebook at Rivera. And I am on Facebook at Amanda Friedman Psychic Medium. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in tonight. Hopefully, helped a lot of people. I feel like it really, feel, feel like it really did. I feel like we opened up a can of worms. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and don't forget the show will be archived. Okay. So check it out. Please take care of each other. All right. Good night, everybody.